Hello everyone. Let there be light. Today we are installing two lights from Bush and Muller on a fully e-mountain bike. The MUI is used as the rear light. This includes various holders and parts because it can be attached in several places. We mount it on the seat stay. For this, there is a suitable holder, some adhesive tape, screw and nut, as well as two cable ties. All we need is the cable tie. The position on the seat stay is important. On this KTM Makina Kapoho Master, we position the holder where the light cable protrudes from the frame. Our choice for the front light was the Bush & Muller IQXME high beam. With its compact size, powerful light output and high beam, it is quite popular. Firstly, we need to prepare the light. In other words, we mount it on the corresponding holder. It is placed on the handlebar to the right of the stem. Thanks to the curved mount, the light still shines in the center of the bike. Now both the front light and the rear light are installed on the bike. So far so good. You can put the front light cable to one side for the moment. We'll continue with that shortly. First, let's find the best place for the remote control of the front light. As close to a grip as possible, of course, so that you can reach the button at any time without having to take your hand off the handlebar. But it can get pretty crowded there, with a control unit, a remote for the seat post, the brakes, and so on so you may have to change your current setup a little here and there. It works quite well here on our bike. Perhaps it is similar for you. To avoid a complete mess of cables in the cockpit at the end, we use a spiral ribbon to wrap the remote control cable around the brake line. It looks a bit more elegant. We are finished with the cockpit for now. Now let's lay the cable for the front light. To do this, we have to remove the stem of the KTM Makina Kapoho. As with many modern e-bikes, most of the cables run inside the frame. We can only access the head tube properly when the stem is off. But it's not a big deal. While you run the cable through the head tube, you can hold the stem and handlebar in your other hand. Once the cable is through, put the spacers back on. Check the headset for any potential clearance and you're ready to continue. Once the battery has been removed, you can see whether the manufacturer has already pre-routed the light cable on the inside of your electric bike or not. We are lucky, because KTM prepares its bikes really well. The cables are already in the frame, which makes our work much easier. We basically only need to estimate the required length for the light cable. Once this has been clarified, you can start stripping the cables. To do this, separate both poles including the sheathing. The easiest way to remove the insulation is with special pliers. In our case, these are from Nipex. However, other manufacturers probably also offer these. You then put two shrink tubes on the separated poles. Not shown here, but still very important. We will need them again in a few moments. Repeat the stripping process on the cable coming from the motor, and then twist the two together thoroughly. Then it is sufficient to bend them slightly with your fingers and connect them to the rest of the cable. Now the previously mentioned shrink tubes are used. Slide them over the newly created connection. Then hold a lighter underneath and light it briefly, so that the area heats up, and the shrink tube reliably encloses everything again. When laying the newly installed wiring in the frame, it is essential to work cleanly. After all, nothing must be jammed. Nowadays, however, there are appropriate routes in such a down tube, or there are retaining clips under which you can lay the cable neatly. KTM even offers a complete cover that neatly separates all cables from the battery. Finally, simply put the battery back in the compartment, put the cover on, and you're done. For the usual function test, press the light button on the LED remote. You can also check the separate button for the high beam at the same time. All that remains is to connect the rear light. To do this, we first remove the rear wheel. 
This makes it easier to work because everything is much more accessible. The same question arises with the rear light as with the front headlight. How far has the manufacturer of your e-bike thought ahead? Hopefully as far as KTM, because in our case the cable is once again already in the frame. Understandably, only the bare cables, so we still need plugs for a connection. The cable that runs from the rear light already has blade connectors at the ends. Consequently, we now only need the matching blade receptacles. The cable is stripped again using the special pliers. We then use crimping pliers to fit the blade receptacles to the exposed poles. Before you connect the tongue and sleeve, also known as the male and female connectors, remember the shrink tubes, which are also needed again. Again, one sleeve per pole. Once you have threaded the cable ends together, close the plug connection and push the shrink tube over it. Briefly heat the relevant area with a lighter. If you can, check the rear light beforehand. Now carefully guide the cables back into the frame. The cable is not only best protected from the weather there, but will also not accidentally get in the way and possibly be damaged. We now do our checkup and press the light button on the LED remote. It looks like everything has worked as desired. Hopefully this is also the case for you. If not, you can always post your questions in the comments. Thank you for watching our tutorial. Hopefully you were able to learn something for yourselves. Good luck with your other work on the bike, and of course, have fun riding. Take care.